Today we're going to be making something fantastic in Blender 4.2. We're going to be making a scroll animation in Blender and it's super simple. Yes, I have made this tutorial before just in case anybody points that out, but I decided I'm going to do it again. First of all, because Blender 4.2 has a few changes now. And secondly, because I think I can explain things a little bit better compared to the older um, tutorial. I've learned a few things since then. So if this is what you want to make, the result you see here, keep watching. Um, you can add whatever you want to the scroll. Um, you can add your own image, a picture of your cat, whatever you want to do. This is just what I went with, an old map. And um, yeah, so let's jump into it and make this animation in Blender 4.2. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Definitely give it a like, subscribe, and check out some of my other stuff as well. So let's jump into a fresh scene in Blender 4.2. And we're gonna select all the default objects and we're gonna press delete on our keyboard. We're then gonna go Shift A and under our mesh add options, we're gonna come to the drop down here. Let's just add in a cylinder. Let's now tab into edit mode. And inside of edit mode, we're gonna go S, with everything active. So we're gonna press S, 0.1, and hit enter. So now it's um, 1 tenth its original size. And then let's press R, X, 9, 0, and hit enter. So it's now rotated 90 degrees on the X axis. Um, so now it is the right size. But if we go into our right orthographic view by pressing 3 on a number pad, you're gonna see here, it's too short. So we're gonna press S, Y, 22, and we're gonna hit enter. So S, Y, 22. As you can see, now let's also go to our face select option, select the end cap and holding and shift select this one as well. Then go control B to create a bevel, roll the middle mouse button and just round it out on the ends. Now it's a nice looking stick. So we're gonna tab back out, we're gonna right click and go shade smooth. So now we're back in object mode, make sure to go there. In our front view, we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go to our um, curve options, we're gonna add in a Bezier curve. And it doesn't matter what the curve's like. We're just gonna tab into edit mode and we're gonna press A to select all of the handles and we're gonna press delete and delete the vertices. So now there's nothing. We're just inside of edit mode. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here to our tools. You might have to press T if you can't see it. And we're gonna come here to the draw tool. And let's come here, starting at the bottom. And we're just gonna click and do a continuous drawing. And I know this could be a little bit hard. We're just gonna go around like so. And then come through and then draw it sort of straight like so like that. So now we've drawn this sort of curve and it's important that you kind of more or less draw the shape I did. So you start here at the bottom, you go around, you go around again, and it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, doesn't have to be. But we're gonna go over to our move tool here and just select this bottom um, handle and just go G and just move it straight. So if yours is wonky at all, just make sure to select any of these bottom handles and then press S, Z, zero, just to flatten them. We want it nice and flat. And at this point you can grab these handles and you can edit it if you wanna make any changes at this point to how it all looks. But I'm just gonna leave it as it is. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tab out and we're gonna go F3 with this curve active. And we're gonna type convert. We're gonna go convert to, and we're gonna convert it to a mesh. Then we're gonna go into edit mode, go to our vertex select option. And we're gonna go A to select everything. And we're gonna type in F3 and go on sub and go unsubdivide. And then you can come here to this tab and you can change the amount of iterations. I'm just gonna go with one iteration. And now it's less, um, less topology, but what we can do here in places where there is too much, like over here it's too dense, you can just select the vertex and go X and then just dissolve verts. So you can select any of these that are too many, too, but are too close and just go X and dissolve the verts. I might do it here and just try and space these as evenly as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you get the idea here. We just don't want it to be too much with the topology here, okay? So just something more in the low end like this, something very simple. And then let's go to our mirror modifier, add modifier search and get a mirror. Go ahead and let's make sure it's on the um, X. But what we might have to do here is go G and just move it like so to the side until you can see it like this. And then make sure clipping is enabled and then just go G and move it in until these two touch. And then go G, Z and move it up to the floor and in wireframe, just select all of these bottom verts and then go S, Z, zero and flatten them so they're nice and flat and make sure to bring them down so they're just sitting on the ground but not touching it. So just above the ground like so. So now we have this and if you want to, you could always move your scroll in closer if you want to do that. Um, but I don't want mine too far apart when I start. 
Then you can select everything, go E to extrude and Y and just extrude it out along the Y. And in your top view, you can actually grab it all and go G, Y and move it in. So it's the same length as the stick. You can always go S, Y and still scale it that way. But I'm gonna go something like this. And there we have it. Now let's go back into object mode. Let's grab the stick and in wireframe, I'm just gonna move it over here, placing it inside of here. And I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and X and move the stick over here as well. There we have it. And I'm gonna select A to select, and I'm gonna press A to select everything. Right click and I'm gonna go Shade Smooth. And then I'm gonna go Shift A, add in a plane. And go S to scale it like so, and then S, X like so. So this is our table, I'm gonna go um, press A to select everything and we're going to go control A and just apply any scale like so So now we have everything in place. So let's make sure to save. I'm going to just call it scroll Whoops There we go Save it to my desktop and I'm going to select the floor I'm going to go to my physics and give it a collision Then I'm going to select one of these sticks and I'm going to make it collision as well and then I'm gonna grab this guy and also make that collision. So both the sticks and the ground are a collision. Then let's select our scroll and let's make it cloth. And um, let's just go down and enable under the collisions, self collision. And then let's simply go over to frame one. And then let's hit the space bar. And now you can see our cloth is clothing, but we need to actually animate these sticks moving apart. So let's go back to frame one. Let's go into our front orthographic view and in wireframe, let's select the stick here and let's press I to insert a keyframe. Then let's select this stick over here and press I and insert a keyframe. Now I'm using Blender 4.2, so it just adds in a keyframe. It doesn't give you keyframe options, but if you're using an older version of Blender, when you press I, you might have a whole bunch of options come up. Just make sure you select location. It's the location we're trying to keyframe. Okay, so keep that in mind with different versions of Blender, but if you're following this, it's best you're using Blender 4.2. Then we're gonna go over, let's go to frame 80. And on frame 80, I'm gonna select this stick over here, enable auto keying. And I'm gonna go G and I'm gonna go X and just move it along to here. And then I'm gonna select this stick and go G and go X and move it along to here, not too far away. Otherwise we'll run out of paper and click. And now they have keyframes. I'm gonna turn off auto keying. So now if we go to frame zero or frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see we have our cloth working beautifully. There we go. And if these are going too far, you can always come and go back to frame 80 and re-keyframe where these are positioned. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it as it is because it's good. So I'm gonna select my paper and I'm simply just gonna go over to my physics. I'm gonna go down to the cache and I'm only gonna give it like a 100 frames over here. That's all I want to cache. And then I'm just going to click here on bake. And it's now going to bake this into a blend file. And I'm going to come here to my end frames and make it 140. That's how long the animation is going to be. So if we come to frame one and we hit the space bar, you can see this. Now, another thing is when we start at frame one, this bounces because the cloth simulation is still kicking in. So what you can do is you can always come here and just start at frame 10 when the cloth simulation has already kicked in. So now it's just a nice simulation like this. Another thing we can do is we can go to our modifiers, add modifier, search and type in sub, give it a subdivision surface like so. There we go. And if you wanted to, you could also go add modifier, search and type in sub or not sub, sol solidify. So type in SOL click on solidify and now we can give this some thickness as well make it look a bit more papyrusy um, and you might have to tab into edit mode and just go to edge select shift alt left click on this edge and shift alt left click on this edge then go shift e and just drag and just give those a bevel weight and hopefully that'll fix some of those shading issues i'm just going to go right click and i'm going to go shade auto smooth and see if that cleans it up which it seems to in this case. Okay, so that's really nice. So now we've got a nice crisp edge here on the paper and I might even just go to solidify and bring that down so it's not too thick. Um, since this would be papyrus, it would probably be a bit thicker than modern paper, which is made with very precise hydraulic presses. Um, okay, so there we go. Okay, so let's go to our front view. Shift A, add in a camera. 
And in my right view, I'm going to move it out and just rotate it down. So if we press zero to go into camera view, this is what we have. You can position your camera however you want. The main thing is we just want to see the whole animation kind of play out. And I might just rotate my camera down a little bit more. Under the camera settings, I'll change the focal length to 85. There we go. There we go. So you want to make sure it just you can see the whole thing playing out like so. Okay, make sure to save. And now is the bit where you got to go to the internet and you can type in something like ancient map or ancient squirrel. I've already gone and done that and downloaded an image as a JPEG and I've put it on my desktop, but you can go through, get whatever a map you want, or you can get some ancient Egyptian text or something, whatever you want to put on this. It can even just be a picture of your cat. I mean, be as creative as you want. It's completely your animation, but I've already picked one and I'm going to show you how you can use an image. So let's jump back into Blender. So back in Blender, you're going to select your map and the scroll part and you can put it whatever you want on it and you're going to go to your materials you're going to click new and call it map and then you're just going to go to your base color and you're going to change it to image texture and then click on open and i've already got one on my desktop that i've downloaded called ancient map i'm just going to go and open image and now if i press z and go material preview i can see there's nothing here because i still have to go over to my uv editing and it just occurred to me here, um, in this case, if I press A to select everything, go U and unwrap, it's only gonna unwrap half of it because it's actually um, mirrored. So if I now tab back out over here and I go Z and go material preview, I can see I have it mirrored, which may not be what you want. So if that's the case, simply go to your modifier. And what you can do is you can go ahead and apply your mirror. And now that you've applied that mirror, you can make sure it's all selected and go U and go unwrap again. And now just select the whole thing over here and go R90, hit enter. Go G to move it and just line that up with your map or whatever you're using. Okay, so I'm gonna go over that. So now if I go over here and I go Z and go material preview, I can see this is what I have. I'm gonna go back to my layout and now I'm gonna to come to frame one or maybe I'll just set it back to frame 10 like I had it. So at frame 10 and onwards, I'm gonna press a space bar and I'm also gonna press Z and just go material preview. And there I can see I have my map. In this case, it's upside down. So I'll just go back to UV editing, just select the whole thing and go R 180, and then go back to the layout. And now, okay, that's good. Cool, yeah, that's it. So there I have it. Now I have my map, so if I go Z and I go rendered, I'm not gonna see anything without some light. So I'm gonna to go to my render settings and I go to my render engine and change it to cycles. And then I'm gonna go over to my render max samples and make it 70, or in this case, I'll just do 50 because I'm doing a tutorial. Then I'm gonna go shift A, I'm gonna to go to my light options, add in an area light. I'm gonna move it up and over, rotate it in, and I'm gonna give it a strength of 400, like so. And I increase the size to two meters. And I might just move it back a little bit more and maybe rotate it in kind of coming from here. And I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate it. Have another one coming from here. So in a camera view, this is what I have. And I'm gonna select this floor and just go G, Z and just move it up. To kind of just close that gap. And that's just due to the collision distance. But this is just an easy way to kind of fix that issue. It's just to lift the floor up. And now we have our map. I'm also gonna to go to my render settings. I'm gonna go down and enable motion blur. And at this point, you can grab these sticks and you can give them any material you want. You can go to the internet and look how to make a wood material in Blender or you can get one online. I already have a library on my computer, so I'm just gonna go and append some materials and add them um, that I already have in my own library. So I'm gonna quickly come back when I'm done with that. And there I have it. I've now added my materials um, that I've just appended in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna just select my floor and I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate, move it back and rotate it here. Just have it kind of coming in from the back, like so. There we go. And you can add whatever background you want. I'll just go ahead and make it, uh, give it a darker material, something like this. But the main thing is I'm gonna select my camera. I'm gonna to go to my camera settings, go to depth of field and click on the eyedropper and then just select the scroll as a reference. And then come here to the f-stop and drag it way down. Like so, and that just gives us a nice soft focus. I might just play around with it. 
If you have to, you can go ahead and add in an empty and then move the empty kind of more forward. And then you can always select a camera and you can use the empty as a reference object instead. That way you can actually move and even animate the empty to control your focus, the focus of your camera. So that's a cool little trick there for you. Um, there we go. I'm just gonna go with something like that. Nice soft focus. But that's the general idea here of how to make a scroll. So let's go ahead and just kind of get a shot here and just go render and render the image. And there we have it. This is what it looks like. You can now go ahead and render this out as an animation. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.